Now, in terms of metagaming, I think that both of these players are some of the best at it. They're well known for studying what the opponent is going to do and not trying to play so stable as just trying to do the opposite of what their opponent wants. So you'll certainly see MC trying to do some more aggressive antics, Rhett trying to catch MC off guard with some non-Roachling mid games. Yeah, and again, keep in, guys, keep in mind that these guys have played each other just a week ago, and they're very familiar with each other's styles. And so that creates even more mind games, and I feel that puts in the advantage of MC just because he was telling Mr. Bitter, saying, you know, I have like 50 different builds in this matchup. I can do anything. I've seen MC do charge Archon timings, even, that's, even though that's really not that popular in almost any other player on any continent. MC is capable of doing some of the wildest things, and an Ohana is definitely a map for that. We do see MC throwing down that Forge first. Uh, you know, this is kind of interesting because players have essentially figured out how to go Nexus first and then build the Forge, but MC consistently does this every time, builds the friendly uh, reminder pylon saying, hey, you want to expand here. Uh, looks like Rhett doing the usual thing that we actually saw Scarlet just do against Dor Doro, sending the early drone to the third base, trying to build that right on point. But drones apparently better than probes. Yeah. At least uh, in the first fight, but we'll have to see if uh, Rhett's going to be able to get up that third. MC has been known to really try to punish if he can. At the same time, Rhett, he's always been known to try to avoid that natural and just go straight for that third shot. And I do like this play also by MC, just letting the pylon finish. It allows him to continue to build probes. He's now, gonna, he's now building his 19th probe. Uh, just helps him get a little bit of an economic edge as he's slowing down Rhett. We do see Rhett building the four Zerglings to take out this forward pylon. Queen incoming, drone getting ready to join the lings. Everything is pretty much a by the book PVZ. And you can see that if the pylon does drop, you do need four Zerglings to drop it at a pretty appropriate rate. Two Zerglings would just be too greedy and delay the hatchery a little bit too long. But Rhett gets up that hatchery pretty much at standard time, even a little bit earlier, at just before the four minute mark. With that natural expansion now going down, it looks like MC is, oh, going to be building a pylon off to the side. He does want to try to do some kind of early cannoning. MC walling himself in. The crowd just loves cannons, <laughs> Rodan. Oh, but Red has senses something. He's going to send his Zerg. Oh, he, he spots it. Shuts it down immediately. And now Liquid Rhett has Queens heading over to his third base. And MC will have to play a standard non-cannon rush game. <laughs> well, MC is just going to get everything up pretty normal. But again, this doesn't mean MC is distraught at all. In fact, MC definitely played so many times from this position. So I can definitely bet that MC's got a really good follow-up plan. It looks like we are seeing Rhett uh, throw down this creep tumor by the third base. And this is kind of an interesting choice. We generally see a creep tumor started in the main to join the main to the natural and then to the third base. But this is an aggressively planted creep tumor. It will allow him to extend forward to this uh, Zelnaga watchtower very early on. What does that mean? He has a forward creep spread that can help him defend two base all-ins a lot more easily. It's a subtle way to deal with that early pressure. Yeah, just being able to reinforce quicker, have that vision, really force Protoss to be very cautious with how they approach the Zerg bases. At the same time, you have to really pay attention to the gas timings from MC at the natural. You can see Rhett is really anxiously waiting to see if MC will reveal that anytime soon. Yeah, I love having the Overlord by this natural expansion. I mean, if you see two gases, you know you can instantly go layer a Zerg. And it uh, looks like MC's going to go for a really fast plus one, and also he does have a Stalker on the way. Now, MC sometimes used to pre pressure with Zealot Stalker, but only going Stalker first and really trying to conserve his minerals. But of course, uh, at the same time, Rhett sees everything, so MC, MC's just being ever so cautious not to reveal any information. I think this is a little bit of a blunder by Liquid Red if he loses this Overlord. It won't be a big deal, but he tends to not have these sort of little mistakes under his belt right away. Whether this Overlord falls or oh. not, and it looks like it will oh. fall. Don't worry, there's another one checking the gas already. <laughs> uh, Red senses something's up, though. Getting a Roach one a lot earlier than he did against Alicia. We saw him plant it at around eight and a half minutes, being very liberal with that timing. But getting it much earlier, he senses something that MC can do, and we see the four gates already finishing up for MC. Imminent pressure is on the way. There's the three gates finishing up right now. This is quite a fast warp gate. This is actually going to be finishing by 745. It looks like MC clearing out with the Stalker. There's Rhett moving forward with his creep tumors. We see that three roaches are on the way. Rhett incredibly crisp timing. Sees the forward pylon. We'll be able to take it out. While this rush is going on, MC is building a Twilight Council. There's going to be a big transition coming up. Does he go for Blink or get charged for a Zealot Archon play? 
Ooh, it's actually going to be Dark Templars originally. MC's been war uh, warping this into his play more and more, but Red is moving with his overlord to see it as well, but he's also getting pressured at his third, Sean. Yep, there it is. The Dark Shrine gets spotted in the main base. Rhett already having those roaches very far forward, able to micro versus the Zealots very nicely. Thanks to that early creep tumor, we see Rhett controlling very nicely, losing maybe two roaches, it looks like. No, he manages to pull that one out at the last second and then forget about it and watch it die. And it looks like he did lose the queen at his third. Yeah, and that queen, of course, just interrupts his production. But more importantly, Red has all the information that he wants. He knows what's coming up. And now he has enough forces, but we do see the force field at the ramp does trap some of the units. And now MC can just continue to shorten the amount of army supply that Red has. Now, this transition from MC very much so favors a Zealot Archoning style, which we've been seeing a little bit more out of MC. It looks like, again, MC still trying to keep this high ground edge. Rhett will need to build some kind of detection soon. We see that there is the Robo facility coming up. Dark Shrine nearing completion right now. Where is that Overseer, Frodan? It's right here at the third oh, shrine. So goodness. Rhett is nice and safe and snug. So Liquid Rhett will be able to deflect any of this early Dark Templar pressure. Uh, Blink is started, so it looks like MC will be playing a little standard, and Rhett shuts down another aggression attempt again. Very nice there, and he didn't lose anything, really, so that's a fantastic trade. And all of a sudden, this tech from MC is not as useful as it used to be, because MC is just transitioning directly into Blink. It looks like, yep, going for the standard plus two Blink uh, sentry play. Very nice job blocking off this expansion. So that way he can pull back with all this Zealot Sentry. Now getting up to seven gateways. And Frodo and I especially love this pylon that's at the high ground of yeah. Liquid Red. He can always, always just warp in, and if, if Red is too distracted, he can do some major economic damage, maybe even snipe a queen, really halt the, predict, uh, the production of Red, and really just cut him at the knees. Looks like fourth hatch is going down. Infestation pit coming up. Now, Ferdinand, do you think that uh, Liquid Wretch should be going for a faster hive with that early infestation pit, or does he want to stay on Ling uh, Roach for the early time? Well, I think he's still kind of missing information. He sees the Dark Templars. He you knows MC wants to do something. He's going to walk up this ramp up here and see a lot of gateway units does not want to get force fielded. But at this point, Rhett has to be very cautious because he knows MC's still on two base and he's going to want to take a third pretty soon, but there's no indications of it. He's not clearing his third whatsoever. Normally, Protosses are very anxious to move out, clear anything at that third, and Rhett knows that MC is what he's capable of. Now MC is moving down to that bottom left expansion. He has seven gates, which is generally considered an attacking amount of gateways. But given that MC has already gotten himself up to 63 probes, he will use those seven gates to expand and defend himself. The laziest stalker ever doesn't walk three feet. He blinks <laughs> to get to where he needs to go. It's an American stalker. <laughs> <laughs> if I do so, say myself. I can only blink 15 feet, and the door was 20 feet away, <laughs> so I just waited 15 seconds for the cool down. Oh, my God. Liquid Red uh, now following the most useless observer that there has ever been, literally not letting this out of its sight. He is l microing this overseer individually to track it down, but a second observer reveals two DTs in the main. Oh, and is it SC going to split them up? It looks like he's going to just pair them two by two, and I Red sees that. He's going to have to evacuate immediately. He does drop a creep tumor to try to connect more bases at his third, but he still has to deal with this. Red's attention is now on his main. He's going to pull all his drones, now trying to bring the Overseer. And these DTs, how much damage will they be able to do before they're exterminated? It looks like he lost those two Dark Templar, but did manage to kill 10 workers, a decent trade. And now MC is establishing control down at that bottom left. 11 Blink Stalkers, five Sentries, two Immortals. What is the energy like on those Sentries? All of them nearly full. He will have plenty of Force Fields to defend with. Rhett now is not yet getting the Hive, still staying on that layer tech with a lot of Roach length. MC is getting caught completely out of position. Oh no, MC does not see it. There's an Infestor as well, trying to see if he can land on inf uh, Fungal Growth here, but it looks like MC does Blink oh, back. Oh no, the, no the Sentries get completely surrounded and now MC desperately trying to throw down the force fields as the Roaches burrow movement forward. One shotting an immortal, two shotting the other. Once we see those infestors rolling in, MC is going to be very low on options.
Oh, MC loses three Immortals, the fourth one getting in there, but not even attacking, just kind of waltzing in there, and then Immortal immediately drops, and all of a sudden Red has free range to be a little bit more aggressive, but he backs off because he doesn't have the resources there just yet. In fact, Red uh, lost a lot of his investors as well, but we do see that Red has reinforcements all ready to go just again, and I love that Red's being so comprehensive, making a few overseers just in case MC's being sneaky with DTs. Those four hatches churning out so many units, Frodan, I mean, Rhett is going to be so strong in this follow-up attack. There's no sentries, there's no immortals, and you can only build those immortals one at a time. It is going to be only stalkers to defend the attack. And you can see that Rhett's pushing in here. He does have a couple of fungal growths, but he's just going to use them for Infested Terrans to add some DPS. Rhett's not focusing the immortal. The immortal's doing a fantastic amount of damage. We can see the reinforcements are huge, and the amount of damage some rushes are focusing the probes as well, so Rhett's splitting up the army in a very nice fashion and really whittling down, trading very efficiently. Rhett doing a great job keeping MC at slow, steady losses in these battles. MC's micro, incredible, allowing him to stay alive against this seemingly unstoppable force of roaches. MC will be able to hold, but the edge is continuing to tip in Rhett's favor. Oh, man, but Rhett's drone count is not that high, so he actually has, doesn't have the strong of an economy. MC doing this entire time, still keeping up probes. He's at 70, Sean. Seven workers total killed off by Liquid Rhett. As we scan around the main bases, we see that Liquid Red does not yet have a hive having little mistakes like two in the extractor at the natural expansion. He has not yet begun building any drones for his third base. He is actually continuing to just roach rally to the front. He feels that now is the time to be able to take down MC, but I actually think that after that second attack, MC is starting to stabilize and there needs to be some transition from Rhett into late game. Yeah, Sean, I think I agree a lot with the high timing as well. Rhett definitely needs something, a step up. He's making a lot of investors, but now he's starting to focus more on drones and starting some melee upgrades. So he's starting to already pick a different tech path. Does he have plus two roach? Yeah, wow, investing quite a bit in the roaches really trying to take him down at that point in the game. But those Roach upgrades don't really last too much longer once you start transitioning over to that Ling Infester style of play. Sure, the Infested Terrans gain the benefit, but really it's the Lings and Broodlords you're focusing on. And there we also see the Robotics Bay going down. And once again, we see MC very stably getting to late game without any Colossus yet. Yeah, and uh, MC has really been able to just maximize stalker efficiency. That's pretty much what he's been known for. And at this point, MC is comfortable enough to start using his gas for things other than the units. He's getting plus three. He's getting that Roblox Bay, like you said. And he's also getting a War Prism. Oh, and MC with that. a War Prism is so dangerous. Yeah, I mean, just the, uh, the ability to dart around with these Dark Templar. And wow, this is a ballsy expand, Frodan. I mean, MC essentially saying, yeah, I'm not max, and you probably are, and I don't have cannons, and this is out of position. But you know what? Let's just expand because my micro is better than yours. MC is incredible at controlling in these sorts of fights, but he's going to have to do it perfectly against an army of this size. Yeah, Red doesn't know about that fourth base just yet. He's going to try to set up a pretty good comp case. So he's not channeling up. There's no sentry, so it's pretty much just blink stalkers versus the raw aggression of Red. And it's from that land on the left side of stalkers. MC trying to get a good surround here with his units, but the Immortals are doing so much damage. Oh my oh goodness. Oh my gosh. MC able to deflect that attack with ease, and you know, people love to say that the Zealots are so bad against the Infestors due to the fungal growth completely disabling him. Look at this, MC also Dark Templaring the top right expansion in the meantime, taking out more drones two at a time. Wow, and uh, MC's just been really, I mean, these Dark Templars have been alive for a couple minutes as well, so MC's just using it to threaten and constantly pull Red back, make sure he's keeping accountable with his multitasking. And again, Red's drone count isn't as high as he would like it. Yeah, and I mean, we, we, I want to come back briefly to that Infestor comment that, yeah, fungal growths are good against the Zealots, but it doesn't do maximum damage to them. And all that really died in that big engagement were the Zealots. And there were four or five big fungal growths spent entirely on the Zealot army that wasn't really going to contribute much to MC in the first place. All his gas units, the important ones, managed to stay alive. And as MC approaches Max, he's going to have a very intimidating Stalker, Colossus, and Mortal composition. I, yeah, and I, I think that's actually a fantastic point, Sean, and he's able to trade these minerals for really good gas counts. That's really going to favor MC as we transition into the late stages of the game. The War Prism still being very active 
for MC. Now he's starting to incorporate some Colossus to really deal with it. But Red's now entering that uh, safer period where he's finally finishing up that Greater Spire. MC was not able to really capitalize on that Hive timing, but that's because he has his fourth up, and MC on equal bases is never a good position for Zerg. Yeah, I mean, the only way that Red's going to be able to take this out is to do some sort of trade. This is the scary part for Zerg. 50 Roaches. Greater Spire is done, but there are only two. Ooh, corruptors on the map right now. This is going to be a real crisis for Rhett. How does he throw units away in a profitable fashion so that way he can build the corruptors and then get those broodlords? Well, you see that Rhett is trying to finish up a lot of upgrades. He doesn't want to overcommit to anything, but just like you said, MC is covering his bases really well. He's trying to move into the fourth base as well. Rhett, is this really the position you want to take? It's very dangerous. There's a lot of energy on those sentries. And there it looks like Liquid Rhett now losing a couple of units, enough to build four additional Corruptors with a Ling run by in the main base. And look at that placement by MC, warping in the Zealots to effectively deny that Zergling counterattack. In the main base, MC's Stargate is done. He can do the Mothership transition soon. But we're starting to see Rhett trickle in with those Broodlords, two building at the fourth. And an MC, uh, oh, he's got all the sentries, all the units, the robo units. We see one Colossus down, two Colossus down. The Immortals dealing absolutely massive damage. Rhett's forces getting obliterated in seconds. The big damage dealers, the Colossi, are gone, but the rest of Rhett's army is nowhere to be found. And look at eight DTs in the main. Oh my goodness, this is absolutely destroying everything. It doesn't even matter if there's spines. The Dark Temple are killing everything. Well, MC is also pushing up the center of the map. MC with a huge supply. 17 to 113. MC is everywhere at once while this attack was uh, darting forward. The drop in the main just obliterating all the spine crawlers. Oh Can Rhett get back in time? Holy wow, they do a lot of damage really quickly. The Dark Templar do manage to be taken down, but Rhett is now in danger of losing his fourth. And then another warping into the main as well. MC is everywhere on the map, and Red's not in position. The Stalkers are just going to blink underneath the Broodlords. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, the good game. MC takes game number one in decisive fashion, Prodan. Man, just everything from that two base, uh, two base defense all the way even getting that ballsy for Sean, that was... Such a great play from MC, even though yeah. it's, it's risky, but it's MC, he can do it. Yeah, I mean, you <laughs> saw that just this complete and total comfort being low on sentries. That's always something that every commentator points out, every Protoss player feels. When you have only stalkers and you just get surrounded and killed off. But we saw MC way overbuild zealots. It seems, it seems almost weird. It seems almost wasteful. But we saw trading armies only losing zealots. Trading again, only losing zealots. And suddenly he gets an early fourth. He's maxed, and what a great follow-up with the Warp Prism. Yes, love the Warp Prism play, being active with DTs. Love that he chooses perfect fights by the cannons while he uses his yeah. ability to surround. Fantastic play from MC. So that does mean we will be going on to game number two. The map choice will be Liquid Rets. His decision is going to be dual site. Can he start to pull the series back, or will MC be able to take the series to 2-0? I'm Day 9. I'm Froden. Guys, when we come back, game two between Rhett and MC.